wanna let go, but I keep holding on. Swear my mind. Well, how many windows are there in New York City? What? Critical thinking. Comment on the spot question asked in an interview. Okay, uh, let me think. Are you counting car windows? No. How far away is the sun? Uh, 93 million miles. <laughs> is it? Yeah. And the diameter of the sun is 870,000 miles, which makes it 109 times wider than the Earth, and 333,000 times heavier than the Earth. Shut yeah. up about the sun! Shut up about the sun! What's up, Craig? Area. You actually want me to talk? Yeah. If you got something to say. You actually want me a part of this? Because last I checked, you wanted me fired. I want what? You wanted me fired. I never said I wanted you fired. Oh, you just posted it as I a, asked um, if people wanted you fired. They are the <laughs> ones whole. who responded just and like, they are the guilty party here. Of the four or five different options that we could choose to change the show, one of those, at least 20% of that was, oh, well, maybe we should fire Craig. Yep. How do you feel oh. about that? Well, um, I was I was feeling pretty upset about the turnout of that until Justin Zelensky's like, I don't want you fired. And I was like, well, <laughs> Justin, I'm going to keep doing it just for you. Justin, you're a trooper. You uh, you took the bullet for everyone and Thanks, opted Justin. to uh, make yourself look like an idiot by uh, claiming that you want Craig to be kept around. <laughs> All I have to say to the other six of you and myself that posted that also clicked on that is go fuck yourself. Ouch. Now you know I, how it, it really it feels about you guys. It was a, it was a close balance. And then I was like, you know what? Fine. I'm going to fire myself, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, so, I don't really care. What, what's if you up? want me fired, I got better things to do with my life if you want me fired. Mm-hmm. Like what? Like like endless amounts of schoolwork, which that's is better? so much better. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's sad. <laughs> so, welcome to the Anti-News uh, live broadcast. My brain is not quite in go mode yet, so if there are long, dramatic pauses, I'm still figuring out what's going on right now because I've got windows all over the place popping up. But, Craig, um, how are you, aside from the fact that nobody wants you here? How are you doing? <laughs> That's even more depressing way of stating it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sore. Like, really. Like, everything in me hurts. Okay. Do tell. Oh, you want to know why? Everything just, in just... and on and around you? Yes. I, um participated in what is known as a Spartan Beast Run two days ago. Spartan Beast Run. Mm -hmm. it sounds a little mm -hmm. homoerotic, but do tell. It was, it was. Involved lots of mud and rolling around and climbing. No, it's kind of like, have you heard of like the Tough Mudder? Yeah. And Spartan Run's like, I think that on steroids maybe they have different versions of the spartan run they have like a sprint like a regular one and then this beast one which a friend talked me into the beast one because it's the only one that he still needed to get his trifecta which is all three of them and so he's like hey you want to do the spartan run i'm like sure and he signed me up for the longest one which happens to be 13 miles with like 35 different obstacles in it and it's on a like an atv park trail thing so there's lots and lots of mud and hills and sand dunes and oh it was just god awful it was i mean we had to redefine fun in order to say yeah that was fun like he's like yeah you had fun right i was like what's your definition of fun he's like well we got to go out and experience shit that we haven't done and work our ass off to do it i was like by that definition sure it was fun by that definition anything in the world could be fun but other than that we went to war uh, we worked our asses off we did some new things but jolly it was fun exactly and so and somebody's like well you went through boot camp so it shouldn't have been that bad and i'm like i'm pretty sure this might have been more painful than boot camp hmm. maybe it's just like maybe that's like um when women have babies and then like two months later they're like it wasn't that bad i'd yep. like to have another and you're like bullshit 
It yep. wasn't that bad. I was there listening to you. And I, I would say, I, I've told Kayla this many times, but out, out to anybody who's considering having, uh, a guy who's considering having one kid and doesn't want a second one, just make sure you film the first one. That way you can just bring that back up whenever she gets the idea that it wasn't that bad. It's like, remember this? <clears throat> remember this moment? Right. Because I do. I still have scars in my hand from your fingernails. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of that, I rode my motorcycle there, which this event was listed as the Chicago area Spartan Run. So I looked up the weather for the Chicago area, and it was supposed to be really nice. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to ride my motorcycle there. And all the rain was supposed to say, like, quite a way south of Chicago. Uh-oh. Me off? Uh-oh. You know what that sound means. I don't. You know what that sound means. You're cutting me off. That means it's 9-11 o'clock. You just cut me off. Where we have our 9-11 dance party. All right. Cut me and off. Start the actual show and cut Craig off in the middle of his story. Cool. Alright, so, it is 9-11 o'clock. I don't typically dance, so when I'm told to dance, who knows what's going to happen. I, I feel the same way. Um, my brain said no, but my body just couldn't, couldn't resist. That Not lovely that Nintendo music. That lovely Nintendo music was made by uh, Pulsing, is the name. Um, he goes by Pulsing, and he is a local artist who was generous enough to allow me to play his music as uh, as some of our um, transitional bumpers and stuff like that. So shout so out we to won't Pulsing. Get kicked off of YouTube? Theoretically, no. And to those of you who didn't notice, uh, why the after the live broadcast the feed or the stream wasn't posted afterwards like it normally is, it's because YouTube has a problem with me playing a thirty second King of the Hill clip, which I pulled off of YouTube. Explain that. So. My response to that is, Fox must have a really tight hold on King of the Hill. Apparently. Because not too far in the past, I um, participated in illegal activities. Rape. So, so, well, <laughs> not this time. Um, See? You can make a joke about rape. That's funny. Downloading some... Say... I'm losing you. Oh, you froze. There you are. So you were downloading yeah, King you. of the Hill. I was downloading. I downloaded King of the Hill, downloaded an entire season of King of the Hill. We might have had this conversation because I think it was my internet just stopped and we couldn't do this for a while because of it. They kicked me off because Fox reported every single episode. I got like. <laughs> so you downloaded 19... the whole thing, the whole season as one chunk, and they sent you yes. 19 letters? Yes. 19 letters or some however many episodes i got that many letters in the mail as soon as i got all these pile of letters i'm like man i'm i'm screwed and then within like days my internet was gone xed and so i called them and they're like well somebody downloaded this i was like yeah that was my friend he came over and did it somebody (laughs) somebody in my house did it and he won't do it anymore because (laughs) because he doesn't want to lose his internet again (laughs) exactly So, needless to say, I have not downloaded anything since because that was a big ordeal. But, yeah, and then when all of a sudden King of the Hill is what got you kicked off YouTube, it's like, damn, Fox, you really got the tight leash on that show. I mean, it's a great show. Don't get me wrong, but holy crap. Yeah, and I've used uh, the Office stuff on here, clips from that, which I believe was NBC, and that has not been a problem, Um, and I've... Played things from different movies like The Truman Show, and uh, it'll have a little warning that says, "Hey, they're gonna they can put ads on this if they choose to," which I'm fine with that. It's your content. I'm I'm using it. I should be allowed to you know use it. I'm not claiming it as my own. I don't really know what the rule is behind that, what the rules are, but yeah, apparently King of the Hill, don't touch that. Even though there's such gold there that could be used so well in this show. I love that show. I love everything about that show. I love I everything except for the fact that it was on Fox. 
I wish it was on Netflix still, but Fox probably sued Netflix for playing it or something, even though Netflix probably bought the rights to it. Fox is just bullshit. Yep, yep. Well, that's our woes. Craig's sore in his body, and I'm sore in my butt because of YouTube. So um, let's get into this. If you're new here, this is the place where we talk about what's happening in the world, supposedly, and we do so in our own delightfully, uncomfortably dark fashion and it's mostly just, you know, the chill place where we talk about current events. So we are here to drink a little drink, smoke a little smoke, and uh, just just need to st- shoot the breeze. need to stop stealing Greg Carlwood's line there. That's not Greg Carlwood's line. Well, maybe it is. He says I don't know. I haven't listened time. to Greg Carlwood in a long time. I haven't either, but he says it on almost every episode. Well, we are. Craig, what you drinking? What you smoking? Right now I'm just drinking coffee. In a Starbucks cup, but it's not Starbucks coffee. It's a reusable Starbucks cup, but it's c- coffee and cream. I was waiting for the bourbon. No, no alcohol. Bourbon? No bourbon right now because Mandy brought me that. She's like, I don't want this. You want this? I was like, sure, I guess. Yep. And then um, I'm smoking. I'm, I guess, vaping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really mad at this thing. Can we discuss why I'm mad today about this? Do we have time for that? Um, in 30 seconds or less. 30 seconds. Okay, I got this this um, juice. It is um, it's called Morning Ritual. It's a mixture of tobacco and coffee flavor. And I texted you as soon as I got it. I was like, this is my new favorite flavor because it's coffee and tobacco, the two best flavors in the world. Well, almost instantly, I've had nothing but shit ever since I got the stuff. Cool. Starting out, I think the stuff is – I don't know if you can see how liquidy this is, how runny this is. Yep. Does is this supposed to be that running? It? It's a uh, sixty-five thirty-five, okay. which shouldn't be that thin. That sh- I mean, that's a little on the thin side. That's thinner than I go. I usually do. But I've the had lowest I've had eighty twenty. That's thicker than this. Like you can shake it up. Eighty twenty should think be thicker they... than that. Oh, I thought I thought the other way. Maybe. No. Okay. Anyway, it's super thin because I had fifty-fifty stuff that was way thicker than that. So ever since it's been leaking out the bottom a lot more than usual. It leaks down into the little port where you screw it in, so it sometimes shorts out. It gets really, really hot, and the thing will pop up and say, your thing's too hot, you need to stop. And then at one point, I think it leaked down into the charging port, and I think that's why it wasn't charging earlier today, because I was just getting really irritated, because it would get up to like where it would um, give the full wattage. I'd hit it once, and it dropped down to like 5 watts. It was pissing me off. <sighs> that means your time Cut is off. up, sir. Uh, You're yeah. talking about the vaping. Well, that was the end of the story. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, that's, that's my woes for vaping today. We've got that's a, why I don't vape. Shut up about the vaping, you douchebag. Only douchebags vape anyway. Um, all right. So we've got a we've got a few people in here. Um, we're going to jump into the news here, but before we do, I got to remind you guys that if you are new here and you are watching through Facebook or Twitter or Patreon or what have you, um, click on YouTube, open it up in YouTube, and then you can go join the chat that is happening over on the right-hand side in the little chat window. And if you want to see the comments live and talk about them, if we feel like it, then uh, that's where you got to do that. Also, we will be having uh, the ability to call in later on at 309-716-3818, so get your questions ready, get your topics if we miss them, and we'll get into that. But... uh, we got uh, Justin Zelensky who says, hey guys, I'm drinking and smoking just like you guys. I'm a real boy. He didn't say that last part, but um, he also says, blue moon harvest pumpkin wheat and some melon vape thingy. So there's that. Justin. Craig, your mic's muted for the love of God. Justin, if you didn't hear a little bit ago, I gave you a bit of credit for keeping me on this this show because I almost left based on everybody wanting to fire me, but your words of encouragement kept me here. Absolutely. So how do you want to kick this off? You want to, you want well, the first story or do you want me? I'll take the first story because we're talking about drinking and smoking and this one involves smoking. Our, um, do tell. The um, world's favorite CEO lately, as of lately, which I don't know. Did we talk about the um, 
the push against Elon Musk lately? Have we talked about that? I don't believe we have talked about it on here. I think we talked about a couple of his things, but it just seems like in the last couple months, there's just been a lot of push to just get Elon Musk out of the public eye because it's just like everything the guy does. It's like, did you hear what Elon Musk said? Right. Did you see what he did? And He's got kind of a, a Trump reputation lately. Right, right. And so it's just like Elon Musk can't do anything right in the public eye. And so to top that off, did you hear he went on the Joe Rogan show the other day? I saw the memes, but I have not watched anything. I haven't watched it either, but I did see Joe Rogan and Elon Musk shared some marijuana together publicly on the show. Gasp. I know. I know. So this is a big, big, big deal for Elon Musk. I'm concerned Report about the future on Gizmodo. of our society. Report on Gizmodo. The Air Force is not sure what to do about Elon Musk smoking weed. Well, well what are the options? <laughs> what are they debating between? <laughs> it says Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk added yet another wearying episode to our multi-month-long Musk news cycle this week by smoking weed on camera with Podcast host Joe Rogan sending Tesla stock tumbling. Everything sends Tesla stock tumbling. Yet, for some reason, we still care. You would think this guy would be penniless by now, by the way they report right. on it. Right. And triggering yet more speculation about his capacity to serve as a CEO. Really? <laughs> That's the that world we live in still? So, that, so they're claiming that since he clearly smokes weed, he must be a bad CEO. Even yes, though... Like, do, do they think this is his first time? He's just... Right. Joe Rogan peer pressured him into it for the first time? I don't know. It says, but the episode may have been... May have bigger ramifications over at SpaceX, which is a federal contractor and privy to classified information like details of government satellites. He is compromising details of government satellites. He's the one we should be concerned about with puffing that. On that <laughs> puffing on that joint or... Yeah, whatever he was smoking up with Joe Rogan, man, he he's going to spill his guts. I mean, have you ever smoked the weeds and not spilled your guts of all the private information you have? No, never. It says, initial reports suggest that <clears throat> the Air Force, which usually uses SpaceX technology for launches, had launched an, an official investigation, not the unofficial kind, but the official kind of investigation. According to a report... In The Verge, the Air Force actually has no idea what to do about Musk toking up <laughs> and is still looking for an appropriate process to handle the situation. It says, an Air Force official tells The Verge that those reports are premature and that the military hasn't figured out what it's going to do. It's inaccurate that there is an investigation. We'll need time to determine the facts and the appropriate process to handle the situation, an Air Force spokesman told The Verge. They're probably like... <sighs> What the what the what the fuck you want me to do? Right. The the guy smokes weed. What what do you want me to do? Yeah. So says no worries, Air Force. I know there's a lot riding on this, so I'll tell you exactly how to manage this situation. Just relax, enjoy the ride, dim the lights, order some cheap and greasy on seamless, and put on Pink Floyd's The Wall or maybe Sigur Rose. If the cops show up, do not let Musk answer the door. And no matter how much he begs, don't let him fly any jets or tweet until the morning. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. See, that, that's about all you can do because he was in California. Right, where it's, where it's recreationally illegal. illegal. Correct? And he, I'm right there, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. And he, <laughs> from what I've heard, he puffed it one time like – Joe Rogan passed it, he hit it once, and that was it. It wasn't like he was just like, oh, yeah, I'm a big pothead smoker. If, even if he did, who cares? Who gives a f Has it's this guy, like, has he um, has he come out as a Trump supporter at all? Because they're really that, looking for a reason to take him down. <laughs> I don't know. There's been so much against him lately that I can't remember. I want to say that back in the day, he kind of did side with Trump back, like, during his um, campaign and stuff like that. But I can't remember. I don't quote me on that. So, yeah, um, I'm definitely questioning his abilities to um, be the CEO of 
Tesla and SpaceX. I mean, and then I don't know how they're ever going to trust him with classified information again. Yeah. After that. Obviously. Because, so, you know, we... Because none of the um, generals and stuff that are in the military have probably ever in their life touched weed. None ever. of the presidents have either. They None of them no. inhaled. And none of them have pictures of them with joints hanging out of their mouth. <laughs> anyway. Or been arrested for cocaine. Anyway, Which... I've got... Speaking of nothing burgers, I have an article here that I think uh, is a, another good opener. Be a, hopefully a nice short one. Uh, did you hear about the Jersey man who was arrested after telling staffer Al Qaeda ordered him to blow up Disney World? <laughs> no, I missed that one. <laughs> I must have been away for that one. It was in all the headlines. What do you mean? <laughs> okay, uh, so this says, So much for being the happiest place on Earth. A disgruntled New Jersey man told a Disney World hotel greeter on July 21st that he planned to blow up the park when the employee wished <laughs> wished a good day to the man, uh, identified as Gregory, Gregory Lazarchik. Uh, he snapped back, <laughs> I don't want to have a good day, reported Orlando TV station. <laughs> L- Lazarczyk, 56, then uh, coldly said to the greeter, Al-Qaeda sent me here to blow the place up. According to Spectrum News, uh, Channel 13, after the, employee, after the employee realized the guest wasn't joking, authorities arrived at the Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa for an interview. No explosives were discovered on Lazarczyk's hotel room, said the cops. Uh, the suspect claimed he didn't fully remember making the statement, but appeared to regret saying them. Uh, Must have been hanging out with Musk. Right. <laughs> so, he wasn't arrested until August 15th. I don't know when this happened. Um, yeah, an intern overhearing the conversation claimed the, su- suspect, the suspect's threat sounded deadly serious. Um, his sister, who was not identified, blamed him or blamed his current mental state on a head injury he suffered in 2014. From that time, he has, quote, not been it, not been right since. Uh, the sibling told TV station, blah, blah, blah. Uh, looks like his wife also died last year. So the dude's like a basket case. Yeah, um, yeah I'd say so. My first initial thought about this, not to be racially profiling or anything, but... Dude's white. That... Well, I haven't even seen him, but the name <laughs> Gregory just doesn't sound like right. <laughs> the name of a an Al Qaeda jihadist. I am a terrorist. I mean, oh, really? What's your name? Gregory. Gregory. <laughs> Did you say Gregory? Yes. Gregory Mohammed. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. So that's a a nice little nugget. I thought well, worth yeah. worth our attention. Man. Disney World can't catch a break. Yeah. It's almost like there's some <laughs> between the bad pedophiles stuff. and the fake terrorists. I know. Who knows what's exactly. next? Exactly. <laughs> Child trafficking and the Small World ride. I mean, they just can't catch a break. <laughs> so, yeah, that sucks. That sucks yeah. for that guy and his mental state. But yep, yep. I mean, uh, that would be. T- can you imagine being that ticket taker? At that moment, just like right. <sighs> I knew I should have called in. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, your, I'm your whole day is like bucks an hour. Your whole day is automatically like fake smiling with douchebags who just got who are pissed off because they just had to stand in line for 45 minutes. They finally get through the door and they're like, "Just take my ticket." And you have to be like, "Welcome to Disneyland." Blah blah blah. Punch your card, whatever. And this guy's like, "Welcome to Disney Disneyland." I am a terrorist and I'm going to blow up the place. <sighs> oh. Okay. I'm go- <laughs> well, that's it. I'm going home. Check out our I'm gift shop. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I I only make twelve bucks an hour. I don't get paid enough for this. I'm going home. I believe you're looking for the Tower of Terror. <laughs> anyway, uh, you guys, if you want to call in at any point, feel free to. We'll probably have to kick Craig out to do it for a minute. You but... still haven't figured that out? No, no. What well, you can call in at uh, 309-716-3818. It's down here at the bottom of the screen, which is over there. Or keep the chats going. Looks like there's a lot of good chats going on in there. I'm not reading them all right now. It's impossible to keep up with because you guys are little chatty Cathy's. Just um, that awesome. You guys are that great. Just that doggone awesome. Also, a heads up, around 1030, we'll be switching over to the after party. So you've got an hour left. 
of this free wonderfulness, but everybody who jumps into the after party is able to call in and be on the show as a regular, and I'll call you back so that you can be on with Craig even. Real yes. special stuff. Yeah. So, moving on. Moving on. All right. Um, this one might upset you a little bit because I know you like this guy quite a bit, and uh, I had some, I had some hopes for him. Oh, uh, which one? Um, our the most recent woke, seemingly woke actor in Hollywood. You're talking about Jim Carrey, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's bullshit. <sighs> what do you mean? Which part? No, uh, the his wokeness. Yeah, um, okay, it's not well, new for him. He's I've overlooked had to overlook some of the stupidity that he's put out there in recent times, but doesn't well, make him any less great. Maybe you'll have to overlook this comment then. Jim Carrey says, stop apologizing and say yes to socialism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I watched the whole clip that he was on, on Bill Maher. Okay. Well, I'll just read it because we're not going to be able to play the clip. Dumb and Dumber actor, this goes back to you picking and choosing who you like and choosing to ignore what they actually say. Sure. I, because okay. anybody else, Not if you've you been like, that guy's a freaking idiot. We're, we're talking about the difference between me supporting like Louis C.K. Uh, when he's accused of like sexual assault. This is a guy being accused of stupid. I'm okay with stupid. You can still entertain me yeah. and be stupid. If I didn't want to hear a... If I had a problem with liberals and didn't want to absorb their entertainment, I wouldn't be watching anything. So, I just get really tired of paid entertainers, whether it be movie stars or sports players or whatnot just throwing this garbage in our face no matter what side of the the fence it's on it's just like just do your job that's what we pay you to do do your job i don't pay you to be a politician i don't want you to be a politician because i would like you even less if you're a politician so anyway dumb and dumber actor jim carrey on Friday, urged Democrats to say yes to socialism and embrace the attack real quick, from Republicans. Real quick, uh, just in the first sentence, it's like, when you're trying to make this guy credible, like, he's got all these very serious works, he's got all, serious like... Serious accolades. Yeah, and, and he's, like a, he's like a feminist and blah, 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 like, you could have given him any other title, but Dumb and Dumber actor <laughs> says... That's all he's known for, is Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> I mean, you think that's intentional? Let's see, this was... Fox News, so yeah, that was definitely intentional. Yep. Definitely. (laughs) Chosen set of words there. He says, we have to say yes to socialism, to the word and everything, Carrie says, on HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher show. We have to stop apologizing. The actor who's among the richest in Hollywood made the remarks after Maher pointed out that Republicans criticize socialist and progressive Democrats by invoking the example of Venezuela, a failing socialist regime where thousands of Venezuelans flee every week amid dire living conditions. You can tell this is a one-sided article, obviously. It is, but, um, I mean... <laughs> but it's true. Do you that you remember true. when Venezuela was used as a talking point for the other side? They're like, no yeah. socialism, because look at Venezuela, look at Venezuela. And we're all like, I don't want to look at Venezuela. No, look at Venezuela. Wait, stop looking at Venezuela. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You close your eyes, close your eyes. You, <laughs> just like a, a kid watching a PG-13 movie. You're like, oh, no, you're good. And then all of a sudden that one um, um, topless scene comes on. You're covering their eyes. You're like, oh, no, 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 don't look at that. Right. It's okay to watch it, but don't. I don't want you to see that. Yep. It says, um, the word Democrats need to get a plane or – But that word, the Democrats need to get a plan to fight this slander of socialism. You're going to be living in Venezuela, said Mar, and I don't see it yet. Well, when do you – like, what do you just want to wait until you do see it? Well, that's from the guy who said, I hope that we have a – our economy crumbles and we go into, like, a recession just to get Trump out of office. That's that's the same guy. (laughs) So – he, do, he does want to see it, just so we can get Trump out of office. So the rest of it is just basically Fox News talking about how the Democratic Party wants socialist candidates and stuff like that with that uh, Ocasio-Cortez and being the face of the changing party and, um, yeah, just like Bill Maher in all his statements and stuff. So that was like two paragraphs to talk about Jim Carrey and the rest for Fox News to pander to Fox News listeners. So either way, I think it's a dumb statement. 
and it's kind of an ignorant one from, as they pointed out, one of the richest, most um, accepting members of capitalism, Mm -hmm. Jim Carrey and Bill Maher at that. It's like, if it weren't for capitalism, you wouldn't have the platform you're on today. Do you think the government would look at you and be like, oh, funny man, you need to make money being funny man. Go be funny man and we'll pay you you way more than everybody else. Like we give you more oranges (laughs) than everybody else because you are funny. Yep. So, yeah. And then there's Bill Maher on top of that. He's not funny or anything. So it's just like, oh, this guy talks. Yep. Let's give him money. Yeah. So, yeah, I watched uh, uh, Bill Maher's latest quote unquote stand up comedy special recently. Um, I may have chuckled once, and I've liked some of Bill Maher's stuff in the past, as I've said before. And I went into this like open minded, like maybe it won't just be his his live show. Like it won't just be Trump bashing for ninety minutes and call it a special. It was mm-hmm. like literally. Just that. It was minutes. only that. <laughs> Which that's and his even audience. that, and if that's it's... funny, if if you can do it funny, fine. But it, it was basically just like a lecture. It was uncomfortable. But the thing is, obviously, that's going to be his audience. He has all this um, stuff given to him, all this material just at his plate because he can just, just like um, what's what's the idiot's name? The F Trump guy. I don't even know. I shut him. I shut him down. Who? After that, the guy that said "f f Trump." <laughs> You're gonna him? have to be much more specific. No, the guy that oh, came out. Oh, uh, Robert said, De Niro. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Robert De Niro came out and said "f Trump," and then everybody's like, "Woo!" All the like, he has this material handed to him. All he has to do is say like, "Oh, Trump is stupid," and people are like, "Oh, he's so funny, he's so and funny and brave, just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant." Just so brilliant how he said F Trump. Just that choice of words was just just brilliant. Yep. Absolutely. Beautifully spoken. Couldn't have said it better myself. I know. Exactly. And uh, on the same line of this story, um, just the bad Trump, Trump bad thing. Um, if I can get this open. Uh, did you hear about the Handmaid's Tale protesters? I heard comment of it but i have no idea what it involves or entails oh it's uh pretty uh pretty nothing pretty simple to guess where they were going with it um okay so here here's the article the the headline is protesters say he'll turn our country into gilead which i think is something from the show i assume i think it's the political dictator in the show i don't know i could be wrong i've never watched it um, but I don't need to because apparently we're living it. Um, if Brett, if Brett Kavanaugh watches Handmaid's Tale, <clears throat> he's not going to like the demonstration outside his Supreme Court confirmation hearings on Capitol Hill. Protesters upset over Kavanaugh's possible ascension to the highest court in the land dressed as handmaids from the TV show, a popular form of protest amongst women's rights activists. Many are fearful Kavanaugh could be come could become a powerful swing vote in the Supreme Court, one that could eventually overturn Roe versus Wade, which is what this is all about. They are using this show, which I'm sure that's why this show was made, to try and get people to compare it to the now, because we have this crazy evil dictator who hates women in office. But uh, they're saying that women are going to be so incredibly oppressed if he overturns Roe versus Wade. Which would just put it back to the state's decision, which I think is the right move. But uh, right. Um, in this show, I'm assuming, I'm assuming these handmaids and these super oppressed women, these lower class people in society, these nothings, have a lot more to worry about than whether or not they can abort a freaking baby, or do it for free, or whatever. Right. <laughs> I think they're more worried about actual things. This is not a women's rights issue. This is an abortion issue because mm-hmm. statistically 50% of women are pro-life. So how is it a woman's rights thing? Well, that brings me to that um, meme or post or whatever I sent you this morning that I got from my favorite poster, my favorite liberal poster, Al. Al. Um, that said, if you are a man who is opposed to abortion, you should get a vasectomy. 
<laughs> you sent me that post. I didn't realize who posted it, but it all makes sense now. Mm -hmm. If you're yeah, a man uh, who's opposed to abortion, you should get a vasectomy. And your um, your response was? Uh, my uh, The obvious response is, if you're opposed to abortion, then what's it called? When a woman gets her tubes tied? I'm not a doctor. Tubalectomy? Sure. I don't know. Uh, get your tubes tied, obviously. Why wouldn't every feminist have their tubes tied? Then they don't right. have to worry about it. Right. By that same standard, if a man doesn't think a woman should get an abortion, he should get a vasectomy, then a woman who thinks she should get an abortion should get her tubes tied right. naturally. I mean, He's making, it sounds like it should be mandatory even. Like, right. if you want to kill babies, then we're not going to let you be around babies. <laughs> yeah, so... I I was like, well, I almost responded that quote that you told me back to him. Then I was like, no, that's just literally the point? jumping in a pile of shit. What's the point? Exactly. There is no point. And then I would be screamed at by the only male feminist I think I've ever met. But um, <laughs> yeah, there are few and beta between. Most, the most I could say that. Um, overturning abortion might do is make people decide to be slightly sexually responsible again like maybe a little bit right so if you're so irresponsible that you know that you can't legally get an abortion and you're going to still have unprotected sex I don't, I don't know what to tell you there's, there's there other are, issues there condoms aren't hard Condoms do have fail rates, but there's, I mean, there's what birth control. I think even if you want to argue, well, they should develop a male birth control. I'm all for that. I don't have a problem with that yeah. at all. But yeah. I don't know. I think, I don't know, the whole argument, and <clears throat> I've heard um, Frank on the Quite Frankly podcast, who you've had on the show before, um, he was talking about how um, women are crying or feminists are crying that this is taking away their reproductive rights. Right. In, in what is it like, like stomping on their their reproductive rights? Like, right. that's not the case at all. It's not like I don't know. I don't even know how to describe <laughs> to this kind of argument because it's just utter ignorance to state something like that well if guys don't think women should be able to have abortion they should just get their freaking balls cut off because that's the only thing that makes logical sense in yep. this point <laughs> well clearly you don't care about human life so yes probably everybody should have their balls cut off and just end the species because who cares anyway um yeah i mean i mean i'm all pro-choice 100 percent. you can choose to uh not have sex you can choose to adopt you can choose to put a condom on you can choose to take the pill and that gets into sticky uh abortifacient issues but i mean it's it's better than the outright uh birth control in general that's that's one of the choices but murder not a big fan not a big what? fan Let's just chop a, chop it up into pieces and scrape it out with a vacuum cleaner. That yeah. sounds like... And then sell idea. the pieces on the black market. Hmm. That's really dark. And I'm... It definitely happens. <laughs> All right. Well, back to some more... Um, let's say lighter-hearted topics here. Uh, Craig, did you hear about the drag queen that made a powerful statement by wearing a tiara coated with HIV-positive blood? <laughs> I did hear this one. Yeah? Uh, it felt I, like this needed to be brought up. What? I feel like we got to give much, much credit to... All the I'm credit sure, to Frank. Lots of credit to Frank because many of our stories do come from his show. Not he covered the them. headline. He didn't dig into it like I'm going to. He said it was too gross to dig into. He's going to throw <laughs> up, he said. But, um, yeah, a lot... Not a lot, I can't say, but some some of them do pop up on his show. So we do get a lot of se several of our stories from the Quite Frankly podcast. So I do want to give him, throw him credit. If, All the if plugs. We'll call him Big Brother Frank because uh, yeah. Quite Frankly podcast. Go listen to it because it's kind of like this show, but much better, and it's on every single night. So if you really want to get into 
like what's going on in the world, listen to his show. Frank is so much more dedicated than we are, um, to the point that he looks up his own stories. Um, and I just take the headlines that he doesn't cover as in depth, and I dive into the disgusting, horrifying uh, reality of it, and uh, do so with right a smile that. on my face. An Irish drag queen used her local pride celebrations last week as an opportunity to make a pow- This is. Can you guess who this is from, since they called it a powerful and innovative statement? It's got to be CNN. No, try again. Even more direct liberal. MSNBC? Uh, Um, Whoever they are, they're huffing some paint. Oh, oh, Huffington (laughs) Huffo? Yes. Uh, So he made a powerful and innovative statement about HIV stigma within the queer community. Electra La CNT is how it's spelled. Electra Lacunt. Um, I'm guessing that's his uh, his birth name. Wore a tiara during Pride. During Pride, coated in HIV positive blood taken from a consenting individual. I would hope so. With the help, <laughs> just slashed some poor <laughs> bastard. With the help of a qualified doctor, she had to note that too. Um, not just any doctor and not just any guy giving me blood. Anyway, uh, the blood dried onto the tiara and became part of Electra's look during the festivities. And here, let me screen share this so you guys can all see the beauty that is Electra. One second. Here, there you go. This there is, she is. Electra. This cont- headline is extremely misleading. Extremely misleading. Because when they say... Tiara coated in HIV positive blood. My thought is it's like dripping down on his face and I'm like, I'm worried about his like mucous membranes in his <laughs> eyes that this could come in contact with. I'm like, wow, is this no, it's person dried. really, that, that's not that big a deal then. Because once blood has dried, it's no longer HIV positive because mm. everything in it has died. Yeah, um, as you guys can see here, um, there's a nice pink hue to her wig, or his wig, and the tiara. Um, Electra told, it's okay for me to call him a he, right? Since it's a drag queen, he's not claiming to be a she. I don't don't know where where the lines are anymore. Yeah. Electra told the Huffington Post that she was inspired to use pride as a as a time to generate a larger conversation about HIV stigma based on the experience. The experiences her HIV-positive friends have while navigating the queer dating world. I've witnessed abuse that HIV-positive friends of mine have received online dating app on online dating apps, and the stigma is definitely still here. Duh. Yep. Guess what? Um, AIDS still isn't fun. No matter how um, normal it is, no matter how many people have it, nobody wants it. And we okay. want you to tell us before you put your penis in our buttholes... Um, if you have it, just in case, just in case. So my thought to this is this. I was pretty much of the opinion that gay people didn't want to be tied to AIDS anymore. Like, because it's kind of getting out there where it's not just gay people get AIDS. Back in like the 80s, early 90s, if somebody's like, oh, he has AIDS. First thing you ask is, well, is he gay? Right. Because that's. What, what it was most common around, but now it's just so it's kind of more widespread and more there's a lot more knowledge on on the disease and stuff that you it almost sounds um bad to connect the two together right. like you're almost being discriminating by by saying well gay people have AIDS or AIDS is predominantly a gay thing and that's, it's just like just I would get in trouble <laughs> for saying that like if I were to go to the gay pride parade and be like well, do you know anybody with AIDS? I would probably get crucified for that. But for some reason, this person is like, look, we're at Gay Pride. I just want to bring AIDS back into the forefront of the story. (laughs) Well, we're all trying not to think about AIDS. Stop talking about AIDS. (laughs) But she's trying to destigmatize it. But it's like the flu is bad. Nobody wants the flu. If you're on a dating site and you're like, I have the flu, perpetually and it might kill me someday and if you meet up with me we might get the flu together and you might die because of it that's nothing against you that's the fact that you have the flu 
The flu is not mm-hmm. going to be good no matter how much you destigmatize it. And we're we're literally we are literally trying to destigmatize deadly like, disease. Deadly disease. Not just like a mental illness, like some people have. Not saying anything. But a deadly disease that isn't necessarily tied to aside from statistics, isn't necessarily tied to this, these types of activities. Yeah. Um, I just don't understand. Like, yes, if people are just, like, completely bashing on people, like, oh, you stupid gay with your AIDS, which I don't see somebody on a dating site that is trying to hook up with same-sex person is going to go that direction in the first place. Yeah. It's just like when – you disclose that you do have it, which you legally have to, I think. It's it's that person's right to be like, ooh, sorry, I'm not really into that risk. Because, yes, there are ways to get around it now, I guess. Medically, there are ways to have sex and not transmit AIDS. You could do it with protection or whatever, but AIDS still gets through condoms. So I don't even know really how they do it. But um, it's still, even if... Even if there was a 100% foolproof condom that filtered out all the AIDS viruses, it's like, I'm still not going to put myself in that position because there's right. still the chance that that thing's going to rip and then I am just screwed. And I'm sorry, whether it's stigmatizing, destigmatize, whatever the word you're you're talking about, whether it's it makes you feel bad, I'm sorry, I don't want AIDS. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, this is obviously nothing against gay people this is like within the gay community itself them bickering because they're like people other gay people are discriminating against me because i have aids it's like well i'm sorry but if you had cancer that was transmittable through the act of what you would call love making then i don't want to be with you for that either and any mm-hmm. disease any disease I, i'm gonna pass sorry right i just don't like this is just a big headline, and that's all it was, was to become a big headline and gain attention. It wasn't really to destigmatize AIDS. It was just to put the pride parade back on, like, the headlines. Because people are to the point now, a gay pride parade happens, it's not really news anymore. Because yeah. it's just a thing. It's just what we've come to accept. Yes, there are still homophobes out there. Yes, there are still people that disagree with it, that loudly disagree with it. But there's not enough people to make that big of a headline that, oh, there's a gay pride parade in Chicago. Who cares? There's yeah. one every year. Every, Just everyone, like everyone, everyone doesn't want AIDS. Everyone is an AIDSophobe. I'm sorry. You don't have to be a right. homophobe to be an AIDSophobe. Yeah, um, so now it's like, how can how can we get a little more attention to this? Ooh, AIDS blood. Yeah. Definitely the AIDS blood. And uh, Shock Troop commented and said, uh, no one likes blood, lol, HIV, menstrual, or just regular old blood. And he's absolutely right. If you put blood, uh, a blood-soaked tiara and wig on me, even if it's like the purest, like the purest of all the bloods, I'm still going to pass. I'm, I'm not going to be... I get the heebie-jeebies from people's blood. That's just gross. <laughs> it's gross to me. Like I see somebody like bleed on the floor or like if somebody cut themselves and drips on the floor it's like oh somebody needs to clean that up because that's disgusting yep or like the other day i after i ran that stupid race i had like my legs were all cut up and um i slept in a hotel bed and i get up and there's like little little spots of blood that was just on, the, a on the sheets oh well, yeah I've you're a girl bleeding. for not being able to finish that race without bitching I've, about it uh, well, I was going to say I finished it, but I did bitch a lot. You got to let me I'm finish. I'm still bitching. got to let me finish. Anyway, <laughs> so I get up and I'm like, ew, there's there's spots on the sheets. I feel sorry for the poor bastard that has to change those sheets out because that's disgusting. Yep. But I'm not going to do it because that's <laughs> not my job. Yep. It's gross even when it's yours. Uh, blood or semen or urine or whatever you do in the hotel beds. But uh, let's go to... It's disgusting. <laughs> what do you do in hotel beds? <laughs> Let's go to a break. We've got a lot of chatter in the chat, which is great. I can't uh, be talking and reading all of them. I see that some people are complaining that we're not responding. Kayla, I'm looking at you. But uh, you have the number at the bottom of the screen. If you would like to call in, uh, you are welcome to do so. But before we do that, let's take a quick five, and we'll be back right at the top of the hour to finish up the public 
episode of the Anti News. But uh, grab your drinks if you don't have them, and if you do have them, drink them. Drink them faster because uh, we don't want to be ahead of you. So we'll be right back after this and enjoy. Unless my transitions have all moved themselves, at which at which point I will have to grab them from down here since this program Once still again. doesn't know what it wants. And after these messages, we'll be right back. Light bright, light bright, turn on the magic of colored lights. Light bright, light bright, make a face to glow at night. Smiling friend, shining bright, make a sign to say good night. Just pop in the colored pegs and follow the patterns. It's easy to make your favorite pictures and characters, or you can always create your own light pictures. Light bright, light bright, turn on the magic of shining light. Light bright from Milton Bradley. My God. Buddy and Kid Sister. It sold separately from Play School. Get your skis shined up, grab a stick of juicy fruit. The taste is gonna move ya. Take a sniff, pull it out. The taste is gonna move ya when you pop it in your mouth. Juicy fruit is gonna move ya. It juice is soft. It's right to ya Juicy fruit The taste, the taste, the taste is gonna move ya Hey now kids, come gather around See what just skipped in the town So skip it, skip it Do run, do jump, do hop hop Skip it, skip it Skipping and a screaming and a bop to bop But the very best thing of all There's a counter on this ball So try to beat your very best score See if you can jump a whole lot more Skip it, skip it Come on everybody, skip it Roaring good fun from Tiger Toy Of Connect Four. Four in a row wins. Go for the bottom and go for the top. Watch for the block. Forget it, you're stuck. Go for the glory. Go for the star. Go for it. I win. Connect Four. Go for it. Yeah. Connect Four. It's some time in the future. The ultimate challenge. Crossfire. Crossfire. We better talk over this to make sure that we don't get uh, blocked or anything. So, um, speaking of AIDS, I did notice some subliminal messaging in that Dum Dums commercial that you were playing. It says, stick one in your mouth and smile for a while. <laughs> yeah, the, the Juicy Fruit one was like, pop it in your mouth, something, brighten your day or something like that. Just like, how did we not catch the? If we were in junior high when those commercials were on, it was just like, 
be like um the uh oh, what's that stupid show beavis and butthead laugh we'd be <laughs> sitting around going, <laughs> 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 yeah. he said he said stick it in his mouth <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much what we're doing yes um yep, and cool. just so y'all know while we were on the break kayla came up and she was like hey let me be on the show i can read your comments because you need to be reading the comments she's like it's so boring do you want to run the show yes yes she does of course she does but um it's boring yet she's watching it and uh keep that in mind when she says that um uh she doesn't tune into the show. She doesn't care about the show. It's not interesting. It, it's it's interesting enough that she's kept listening to know that it's boring. Right. Right. So and want to like, be a part of it. How much time we got left? Oh, we've got about 30 minutes on the public. We got, a, we got to talk about the elephant in the room. Before we talk about the elephant, somebody call in for the love of God. Everybody's bitching that they, that they don't have a voice on our show, um, call in, and you are allowed to have a voice. We are giving you a voice. Yes, just because like, it can't be the voice that you're looking for. I'm sorry. These are not the voices you're looking for. This is not the show you're looking for if you want to just, you know, walk through the door and be a part of it. Sorry, Kayla. You actually have to pick up the phone and call in. Yep. Read Cra- some comments crazy while you're at it. All right. Um... <laughs> Let's see here. Lucas Riley, this is back away, says, As a man-child that is now 30, I look lame as hell. I don't know what they're talking about. The next one is, Putting things in your mouth. That's how you get AIDS. <laughs> back to the Dum Dums commercial. Yep. I don't know if that was before or after the commercial. I think it was but before. It was I think it was before you said it, but during the commercial. Kayla says, And now I'm about to peace out because this is stupid. She peaced out to come up here and beg to be a part of it. All right, Lucas Riley says, The chat is super fun. Lucas, thanks for being a good sport and not a stick in the mud. Um, Kayla says, The only thing that's interesting is your fans. Well, they wouldn't be together in one place if it wasn't for this boringness, wife. Uh, Kayla also says, Lucas Riley, exactly. Uh, Him saying the chat is super fun. Super fun. I'm glad we have such supporters. Yeah, yeah. Um, everybody but my wife. Lucas Riley says, so now I will actually have to listen to this episode in podcast form. Why? Are you leaving, Lucas? Um, he might be saying that because I played the AIDS song. Um, um, Shock Troop says, it has been fun. It, it has been fun tonight. Um, I guess he's leaving, Shock Troop. If you're leaving, thanks for tuning in. We're not done yet, but stick around if you can. Kayla says, don't call, don't give in to the system. Uh, and then she says, system asshat. That's my wife. Um, and I'll pull back up here to prove it. Asshat. Uh, Lucas says, last time I called in, why were you yelling last night? What? I don't know what that means. Uh, Shock Troop says, I'm not bitching. Also, if we don't call, the system will actually be down. Um, no. If you don't call, the system will continue as it is. And if you do call, the system will get better. So please do. Um, and also, Shock Troop, I wasn't saying that you were bitching. I was referring to the one woman that I'm allowed to say that about. And who is the one woman who listens to the anti-news, even though she claims that it is a horrible drudgery and a test in endurance. you got to be extra careful with telling a woman that she's bitching. Yeah, I'm, because I have I'm fully on aware. multiple occasions with multiple women said uttered the words bitching or or very very like variations of Dude, that. Dude, if you like, say that she was bitching, bitching, then that means she hit or that means you hit her with your hand. No, that means after calling her a bitch. You, I was going to say that means you called her a bitch. <laughs> it, it, no, it's I worse than know, that. <laughs> I do know one of my good friends back in the day when he was dating his current wife that he's probably going to divorce soon, um, she heard me say in the room with him when he was on the phone with her, I said something about her bitching, and she raised hell that I called her a bitch. I was like, I, I never called you. There is a complete difference between right. bitching and being and actually the physical form of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I, I have to – I have to explain that to people sometimes, so I just kind of stay away from telling a woman she's bitching yep. unless it's unless it's um, absolutely necessary. 
Yep. I love you, Kayla. Thanks for thanks for listening. Um, and thanks for posting in the comments. Holy shit, uh, I don't listen to this. Normally I have to cover hashtag real news uh-huh. on Monday mm-hmm. nights. Tonight, instead of hubby time, I got you to, have a thousand I, I get to entertain your on, fans. On YouTube? Yes, Kayla, they're all here for you. Um, and I you also have- told you, please, please um, call into the show and let us know what you think about the local news. You can be our local news correspondent, cool. but uh, you didn't. You haven't, and you've told everybody else not to. So you're just a troll that I will have to kick out of here eventually. Kidding, We're not I love you. The real news, but we do have a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Just saying. It's true. And those <clears throat> those are people we don't know because they're not local. Anyway, um, I gotta before just to make sure we get this in here uh, for the public under the wire. So we have all three news topics in the headline addressed. Uh, did you hear about the latest pandemic, or what I'm calling the inevitable pandemic to come? AIDS? No. <laughs> Not oh, I AIDS. I we were on the same, to- same topic. There's a hero inside of all of us. I'll make them see everyone has AIDS. My father, AIDS. My sister, AIDS. My uncle and my cousin. And we've reached our limit. Um, we're going to get we're gonna get pulled. Um, so, no, did you hear about the uh, the... Sick flights, the people on the planes who keep getting ill by the time they're off the plane? I heard a little bit about it. I didn't look into it. CDC investigates two more flights that landed with coughing passengers. Um, I mean, the long and the short of it is these these planes leave, and there are people, one or two people that get on coughing, and then by the time they land... There's like a hundred people on the plane who have these flu-like symptoms. Flu-like symptoms emerging within like a matter of like 13 hours, not three days like it is normally the case if you were to come in contact with the flu bug. Um, and yeah, no, Nobody's really talking about this. Do you remember the swine flu about eight or nine I'm years I'm predicting ago that where- it's going to be the next thing. Where people were terrified to even get on planes, and now people are getting sick in mid-flight and developing these symptoms. And yet, I didn't know about this hmm. until we heard it on the real news here. Absolutely. No, um, yeah, I'm predicting that this is going to be the pandemic of the year, because we always have to have one right around mid to late uh, summertime, where the world Wait. is in utter chaos, because... Do you remember... Do you remember uh, the giant, crazy Ebola outbreak where everybody was going to get Ebola and it was going to be the death of our country? I did hear about something. Do about you remember? That. Do you remember how many people died in the United States from that um, pandemic? Wasn't there like, like ten or twelve thousand. There was one. One that died in the U.S. Yep, one. Or that got yep. it and was cured of it in the U.S. No, there was one that died in the U.S. Oh, yeah. That- contracted it somewhere else and brought it back pandemic and then died. pandemic the end of our civilization right. so zombie the, outbreak the thing, that, the thing that i think of is um time frame speaking we are getting really close to the midterm so what if some brave senator or brave potential senator stopped this out- outbreak man he'd be a shoe in for the senate seat right yeah yeah i suppose uh, I don't. Makes I don't necessarily sense, think that there's anything that is specifically no, I pointed to, but uh, it's it's definitely going. Like if it continues, if it keeps cropping up, it's going to be a distraction at the very least. And oh yeah, um, I, I mean, I heard about this on the Quite Frankly podcast, as we have sit- stated, most of our things come from. But uh, oh, now it's most. We went from a few, a to lot, a lo- s- several to most of mine, most of mine, because that's. <laughs> my main source of news but uh yeah um i'm predicting that uh this is going to become bigger and people are going to start uh freaking out because and it it, it's flu like symptoms it's people getting a cough and maybe puking um but they're being like detained after they after the flight lands they're being quarantined off and have to go through testing to come out and the doctors that tested them have said it's just like flu symptoms so what is this? Like, it takes more than more than thirteen hours to get flu-like symptoms from a, a host. 
So is this a test? What is this? I don't <clears throat> I don't know. I see a lot of potential here for my obvious conspiracy brain is screaming false flags and the fact that it's not being overly reported on now makes it seem more like it is possibly just a test to see like responses and stuff like that. Um, kind of like the uh, the nuke button last year or earlier this year. It's just um, let let's see how long it takes them to freak out about this and let's test this this out. It's not going to hurt anybody. It's just going to make people miserable for 12 hours, and we'll see what happens in the event of something like this. Just to um, ramp up maybe something full scale eventually later or just to have that in their pocket as a uh, um, in their arsenal as some ammunition or maybe potentially to use against our enemy or something throw it on like a russian plane public plane or something i don't know yeah who knows but uh my favorite quote in the story is uh so i'll, I'll read the full sentence uh, that in, is, in itself is not unusual because of the dry air and the prevalence of cat dander. Uh, <laughs> Why talking about people coughing? Um, the cat dander on planes. Don't bring cats into this. I'm sorry. Um, just call it dander. Uh, we're getting an incoming call. Call back in just a minute, caller, because one second. Or I'll call you back and we'll bring in. But uh, yeah, don't bring cats into this. This is not a cat issue. I'm sorry. Um, Sounds very cat related to me. <laughs> an like aer who, an aero minds, medicine like... expert told The Verge in an interview yesterday this is the best quote in the article. Quote, it's actually pretty common to have somebody coughing in a plane. End quote. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, we needed, Professor. We really needed an aerospace medicine expert to tell us it's pretty common for people to cough on planes. Let's bring in our best, most educated, experienced professor to deduce what is happening right now. <laughs> well? Well, well, dude's cough. I mean, it's just just a fact of life. People people <laughs> cough. Yep, exactly. You, you heard it from the fresh professional. Yep, and I would love to add somebody back in here. Let's see if we can get them back on the line. It's uh, 2035. I'm adding you now to the call. Hopefully, this works and doesn't kick Craig out. Oh, Hello. Local. 2035, are you there? Hello? Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Andrew. Shock Troops in the comment section. What's up, man? Ooh. So, okay. So, we're talking about the CDC and all these six flights, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, so Craig will appreciate this story because um, I was on because a he's not one. fired. I got what? Because he's not fired. Well, yeah, because who? We shouldn't fire Craig. We need to keep Craig. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Two sisters now. We need more gay frogs, though. That I will. <laughs> I will say because you know Alex Jones and his chemtrails. Obviously. Yeah. All right. So the CDC, here's the thing. I'm not going to put a lot of stock into anything the CDC says because of what happened to me personally with the CDC. All well, right. So there I was the on a float. I, uh, yeah. So there I was in Kuwait once doing my, doing my Marine float thing. And I got sick really, really bad. So they, so long story short, they, they flew me back to the Naval Hospital there in D.C., and they sent, like, three different samples of my blood down to the CDC there in Atlanta, and they came back with a big old question mark. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Naval, so, Doc. This is actually the CDC. Yeah, the legit CDC said, wow. we don't know. Yeah, so That's needless to say, there was an episode of House that had everything to do about this where, like, one person was actually sick and then everyone else got this just got the psycho symptoms oh mm. yeah that makes sense um so i was I, 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 what's up i was gonna say i was good i was thinking that you went down to navy medical and they prescribed you motrin and told you to drink a couple of canteens of water and gave you two days of light duty and then sent you on your way 
originally that's what they did in uh, Kuwait, but then they were like, oh shit, this dude's not getting any better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they wait till you are absolutely dying till they're like, um, maybe there is something wrong with you. We should do some shit about this. Yeah, collectively between Kuwait, Germany, and Naval Hospital Bethesda, I was in I was in a hospital bed for a month. Holy crap. So yeah. did so, they so, ever so, come back with more than a question mark? Nope. <laughs> I so just got you, better. You just had a, a deathly disease and the doctors are like, eh. We threw some darts at the dartboard, but we all missed, so we, we couldn't even come up with that. So we just kept hitting question exactly. marks. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I wish that was an exaggeration. <laughs> and then I got thirty days of con- then I got thirty days of convalescent leave in DC, which was pretty well, sweet. I guess that's the good part of it. So Andrew, as as somebody who's been on a few flights in his day, um, would you agree with this quote? Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty common to have somebody cough in a plane. A hundred percent. Who right. doesn't? It's, it's it's dry, ventilated, cold air that's getting and blasted all that at cat you dander. for right. Yeah, all, all that cat dander for thirteen hours. Right. Shit, the jet like. Of course, you feel like shit after a thirteen-hour flight. You all right. feel you like are, you got the flu. You are contained and you're quarantined in disease-ridden disgustingness. For however many hours, because that stuff's not going anywhere, and it's just recycling, no. recirculating back into your lungs. Once you cough it out, they just pump it right back into the ca- the cabin, and you just breathe it right back in. So yeah, it's they're exactly. pretty gross. And then people and touching all the handles and the touching mm-hmm. the bathroom handles and the the seats and stuff like that. It's gross. And because it's pressurized, it's an incubator. Exactly. It's like you're in a giant petri so, dish. Yeah. It, it, that's exactly what's going on. And when, well, Craig, you know this, when you go to boot camp, you get the recruit crud because everyone's from all over the Western part of the country is all in one little, one little squad. Day. Right. It's either a pink eye, pneumonia, or um, cellulitis or all three, a combination of all three. I got, I, I got, got um, guy. I got pneumonia and I put um, hand sanitizer in my eyes literally to not get pink eye. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, I got the pink eye during second phase up there at Pendleton. It's so gross there. Yeah. All right, well, Andrew, stuff. thank you so much oh, for calling in, man. Uh, do you have yep. any comments on any of the other topics we went over tonight, like, uh, eh, you know, HIV positivity? Well, hey, man, there's no other way to be than HIV pos. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Big AIDS party All going right. on. Yep, <laughs> everyone's got it. Well, cool, man. Thanks a lot for calling in. I appreciate it. All right. Hey, man, it's good to talk. See ya. And also, I don't know how to kick you out of this, so there you go. Thanks for being a good sport and hanging up on your own. Um, <laughs> it just stay on the line. It's like, dang it. Right. Yeah, that's it for that. We, I think we've got about time for one more if you've got a the elephant. Good, I got the short, elephant. One. Oh, yeah, the elephant. Who's the elephant in the room? Tomorrow. What's tomorrow? It's a big holiday, big celebration. Oh, uh, people have already. And actually, it is. Do you know what tomorrow is on the calendar? What? It's called Patriots Day on the calendar. Patriots Day. You know, that day where we celebrate the day we gave up all our rights. Remember mm-hmm. that day? Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. So, White so, Nationalist Day? Yeah. So tomorrow is the celebration of the day that the I, Twin I don't Towers think we should use celebration ride? too loosely because uh, Justin Zelensky at the top of the show when I said uh, it's nine eleven o'clock dance party time, he seemed to have a problem with that. So maybe we well, should not be too celebratory. They, they made it a national holiday, so yeah, we're uh, celebrating we, the holiday. Not the tragedy. We should have tomorrow off. We should barbecue on that day, just like we do on Veterans Day when we celebrate dead soldiers and the way we do on 4th of July where we celebrate dead people who fought for our country. Why not celebrate and have a barbecue tomorrow? Or Halloween. Um, I got a couple 9-11 ones. I'm not sure which one I want to want to give. There's one about a doctor who possibly faked her disappearance with 9-11. Okay. Um, there's one, there's one titled "9/11 Truthers Can Be Politicians Too." And then, what's the shortest? We've got uh, about ten minutes oh, in let's here. Let's do that one. Let's do that one. 
The other one I'll just <laughs> highlight. This lady, like, went away from her husband on September 10th, and then he didn't think of anything of it. And then September 11th, this big story, well, obviously, the obvious happened, and then he freaked out. And then her family formed this story about how she ran into building saving people. Well, this court system and the police started looking into her background. They think she just, like, split on him and used 9-11 as a cover-up. But he he doesn't want to admit to it. So, so she's that's the that. culprit. It's it was an inside job, and it was her just trying to get out of her relationship, right? <laughs> trying to cover up her affair. She's like, what if I just blow these buildings up? Nobody will look. Pretend at me. to be dead. Um, foolproof. So here's this: nine um, eleven truthers can be politicians too. It says according to the Tea Party candidate for U.S. Senate in North Carolina, questions about 9-11 still need to be asked. Greg Brennan is a doctor endorsed by Rand Paul, who is in fiercely contested GOP primary in the Tar Heel State to take out an incumbent Democrat, Kay Hagan. 2012, Brennan, while appearing on a conservative talk show in his capacity as leader of the Tea Party organization Founders Truth, said more questions needed to be asked about the attacks of September 11th than and then dodged inquiries about whether he himself was a truther. That statement alone says nothing to me. Because you can't give somebody a hard time for just saying, well, there's still stuff that needs to be answered. Right. Because there is. There is still things you? that need to be answered. It says, and this, the title makes it sound very, like, um, open-minded to truthers, because it is 9-11 truthers can be politicians, too. But it seems very one-sided, like making y'all feel like idiots. Kayla and says, Norma us. Jean, WTF? Did, did you say Norma Jean? Was that her name? Was it? No, I didn't say a name at all. Uh, anyway, nope, keep all going. All right, well. Explain yourself. Um, on Monday, Mother Jones, the liberal publication that first published Mitt Romney's infamous, infamous 47% tape, published Brandon's statement on 9-11. The North Carolina candidate is not the only politician in recent years to embrace conspiracy theories centering on attacks, centering on the attacks on September 11 and those who propagate them. These are five others who have done so. So, again, back to, oh, he's uh, embracing conspiracy theories because yep. he said questions need to be asked. Right. That's not embracing conspiracy theories. Okay, who do you think the number one, out of these five politicians, the number one that they're going to list on here, conspiracy theorist politician, to make it sound as bizarre and crazy as possible? I'm guessing they're going to say Donald Trump because he went on Alex Jones. No, no. no they didn't actually list him. I'm surprised. The very first number one best politician in U.S. history, Jesse Ventura. <laughs> I don't but, know if I'd say best, but... That's their go-to guy. <laughs> that's like us being branched in with Alex Jones. Mm. And it, it lists some of their accolades about their conspiracy theory stuff. It says, former Minnesota governor and professional wrestler has... <laughs> those, are, those two <laughs> statements in a sentence make me laugh every single time. <laughs> has long been enamored for his fringe theories. He currently lives off the grid in Mexico, so drones won't find him. Ventura has long been a vocal proponent of the theory that 9-11 was an inside job and the U.S. government, specifically Dick Cheney, knew attacks would happen in advance. Ventura also believes seven World Trade Center was destroyed and controlled demolition. Okay. Then it lists Cynthia McKinney. I'm not sure who that is, but she's a Democrat. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, she was the one in another article I was going to read. Um, anyway, she has um, basically said how 9-11... Um, kind of added to some civil rights problems, basically how a lot of brown people were labeled as terrorists and stuff like that. Um, Mike Gravel, former senator for Alaska. I mean, does Alaska really count? Um, no. And then, obviously, they got a list in. Ron Paul, oh. the former congressman, has long fostered a welcoming environment for 9-11 truthers. His Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity has a number of conspiracy theorists on its board and has put out publications that allege Washington's crackpot conspiracy theory of 9-11 is false. Okay. Um, so, I'm guessing the only reason they're lumping Ron Paul in is because he 
came up with, or he presented to the mainstream the word blowback, like this might be our fault in some way. And so they're like, you're a truther, or, or well, because he's involved in libertarian because, stuff. They're mentioning him because he has conspiracy theorists in his on his board for his institute. Right. The final one is Rand Paul. First sentence here is fantastic because they lump him in here. First sentence is, Rand Paul is not a 9-11 truther. <laughs> okay. However, he's your number he one? Embraced, however, he has em- – well, he's the last one. Number one is Justin Ventura just to get people's heads and minds blown. Sure. Not um, a countdown. That's not how news Rand works Paul, anymore. Rand Paul, not a 9-11 truther. However, he has embraced the argument that Vice President Dick Cheney used the aftermath of the attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon to push for the Iraq War in order to benefit Hallibur- Halliburton. In a 2009 speech, Paul said that before working for the major defense contractor, Cheney thought an invasion of Iraq would be a bad idea in the aftermath of the Gulf War. However, he changed his tune after rejoining the government with George W. Bush election in 2000. Paul suggested that his re- this reversal by Cheney was the result of a desire to enrich his former employer's Halliburton. That is completely out of the question. Why would any politician ever do anything like that? That must make him lump Rand Paul right in with yep. Alex Jesse Jones. Ventura. And Jesse Ventura. And Alex Jones. Yep. So all that to say, you know what? Politicians can be truthers too or vice versa. Truthers can be politicians too. Let's just spread a little love here because, I mean, these crackpot theories are, aren't going anywhere. I mean, we got this big thing coming up tomorrow. We're going to hear all these crazies come out of the woodwork and say how we should still be asking questions and how Dick Cheney possibly um, God used, forbid. This to his, used this horrible incident to his advantage financially, which it's not like there wasn't lots, hundreds and hundreds of other people who used this financially to their benefit, like the people who insured the World Trade Center days before it fell down. Right. Yeah, and for those who haven't seen it, uh, I posted my 9-11 post today so that I, you know, wouldn't get in trouble for it because if I post it tomorrow, I will. But uh, it's uh, Brenter Hewn, at Brenter Hewn. I don't know his name, but uh, I'm assuming it's Brent Terhewn. <laughs> but uh, his quote is, I like my women like I like my Building 7, going down for no reason. That's conspiracy theory reference that nine out of ten or nine out of eleven people don't get. It's an inside joke. <laughs> That's great. Yep. That's fantastic. And yeah, so, you know, happy Patriots Day. If you're not listening to this until tomorrow, happy Patriots Day. Glad we're all patriots. I'm glad tragedy like nine eleven could bring us together, so we could just voluntarily give up all the rights that we gave up in the last how many years has it been now uh since 2001 so 17 17 years wow wow almost so next year the person graduating would have been or not may have not been born or would have just been born next year Uh, yep and these are the people who are about to take over our country and make make the rules. Yeah, and, you know, we're not... I, I mean, I would say that we're 9-11 truthers. We're not 9-11 uh, conspiracy nuts because I'm not sold on any one particular theory. Craig, are you? No, no. I just know that what was, um, what was the quote up there? Um, questions need to be asked about the attacks on September 11th. Yep. God forbid. There's, and there's a lot of holes in the story. Yeah. As as I think it was Ron Paul that or one of the publications that considered the main story Washington Washington's crackpot conspiracy of 9/11. That's my favorite. Yep. My favorite title of the official story. Lucas Riley says RIP to all the victims of 9/11. And yes, um I agree. I agree. Uh, I do too. The false flags don't mean that nobody died. 
Uh, that's a common misconception. But I think that's going to have to wrap it up for this episode of the Anti News. And if somebody wants to show me the very irrefutable evidence that there was no foul play in 9 11 and completely refute all of the 9 11 conspiracy quote unquote theories, um, prove me wrong. I will submit. I'm open to it. I don't care. Uh, but there's there are questions that need to be asked and questions that need to be answered. Um, and once you do prove me wrong, I will submit. I will collapse into my own footprint, as humans are known to do. <laughs> but uh, happy 9-11, everyone. Um, putting this out early because that's, that's the way we roll. This is our 9-11 special, and we kind of touched on 9-11. Um, and, uh, we've got several stories left to talk about. And if you want to be a part of them, if you call into the bonus episode, which is the anti news after party, which you can find by going to patreon.com forward slash the system is down, you can continue this conversation with us and we will add you to the call and you can be a part of the whole conversation, not just a short call in. So we're going to jump over there right now. Um, Craig, any final thoughts before we do? Nope, I think we covered it all, and I'm sure we'll have plenty more to cover later, but it's been fun. I'm glad we did get at least one caller in. It's true. We got one call in, and we can get much more if you join us in the Downers Club. Patreon.com oh. forward slash the systems down. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next time on the Anti-News. Have a great and wonderful Patriots Day. Hello? Eat my tarts! This cosmic dance of bursting decadence and withheld permissions twists all our arms collectively, but if sweetness can win, and it can, then I'll still be here tomorrow to high-five you yesterday, my friend. Peace.